What's happening people? Welcome back. Uh, in this one we're going to show you how to make the aiming feature for your game. Obviously the game has guns. It's going to have to have some sort of aiming mechanic. So I'm going to show you how to make this aiming mechanic where when you aim your camera will animate to like pan in and you also get a cross here which is kind of nice as well. So making this is pretty easy and I'll show you how to do it. The first step though that we're going to do just to get it out of the way is go to edit project settings and add an input event. So if you go to input, action, hit the plus, and then you can call it something. I've called this one aim. And then if you hit this drop down, you want to select the right mouse button for this. So I've uh, made a new one called aim, mapped it to the right mouse button, and that's all you need to do to get started with the video. So if I open up my character, if you right click anywhere and type aim you'll now be able to actually use your event that you made um, and also you want to add a new variable so click add variable go to the um, value it's going to be a boolean type and call it is aiming and then you have this option for replication replication is pretty much saying do we want other people to know about this value when it changes or is it a local value so a local value might be like a note that i wrote to myself other players don't need to know about that, so we don't need to replicate it. But if it's something like the amount of health that my player has, then we definitely want to replicate that, right? Because when I kill someone, I want to know that I killed them. I want to know that he's he's run out of health. That's important to me. And so we need to tell other players about that value. So uh, for replication, just select replicated, and that will replicate this value to other people. Because other people do need to know if we're aiming or not. And that's mostly just for the animation side of things. So with the aim, I'm going to make a new uh, custom event. If you right click and type T and then a dot, you can add a custom event. That's the fastest way to do it. And uh, we're going to call this set aiming. It's going to have one input and that's going to be a Boolean input. And this is going to be called is aiming. And all this is going to do is it's going to take our is aiming value, so you can hold alt and drag that on like that to set it. And uh, because it's a replicated variable, it has these two little uh, spheres here to let you know that it's replicated. So the reason that we're doing a custom event to do this is we can make this a run on server event, make it reliable. And this is because replicated variables, variables that we are going to tell other people about, only the server can set them. So I can't set aiming to true and everyone else knows about it. What I actually need to do is say, hey, server, can you set aiming to true? And then everyone else knows that I'm aiming. So that's how it works. And whenever you make a replicated variable, you need to do it that way. And then one more thing we're going to do is we're going to use controller rotation your you want to set that so if we're aiming spin um, and if we're not aiming don't spin so w once you're aiming when we rotate our entire character will spin to face the direction we're aiming in so when i press the aim button we're going to set aiming go ahead and set that to true and then when i release we're going to stop aiming like that and this is kind of a little bit uh, weird, like it might be a, a bit hard to understand, but we also need to set this to true as well. And set this as well to false. The reason for this, and uh, it's a little bit silly, but the server can't set this and it replicates down to clients. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble getting it to go. So if you just do it on the client side as well, before it goes to the server event, then it will definitely work. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is that whole FOV thing. You'll notice when I aim down the sights, my character's camera sort of zooms in a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to right click and add a new tick event. This is an event that is called every single time a new frame gets drawn to the screen. So, I mean, that's kind of like a, a high level overview of how it works, but that's pretty much what happens. So what we're going to do, is every single tick we're going to check if our character's aiming or not. So to do this we use a branch. 
And uh, if my character is aiming, I'm going to set his FOV to be 30. And that will cause the camera to zoom in. And if he stops aiming, we can set that back to 90, which is saying zoom out. To do this, we'll use a new uh, variable. So I'm going to add a float variable this time. We'll call it desired FOV, desired field of view. We'll make this a float. And so if we are aiming, we're going to set this value to 30. And if we are not aiming, we're going to set it to 90, which is the standard field of view that the camera usually has by default. Okay, so you notice that when I aim down the sights, there was a nice smooth movement. My camera uh, smoothly animated. And the way that we do this is using an interpolation function. Unreal Engine has a bunch of interpolation functions, and we can use them to smoothly blend a value over some given period of time. So, in the case of my camera's field of view, that's just a single float value. So we can use what is called finterp2 to set that. Okay, so we're going to take my camera. To get the camera, we can just hold control and drag the camera in. And we're going to grab the camera's field of view. And so to smoothly blend the camera's current field of view to the desired field of view, which is the one we want, we're going to use finterp2. So right click and type finterp2. All right, so I'm going to take this and we're going to set field of view. Plug that in there, plug that in there. Okay, so the current field of view is this here. The target is the desired field of view. The delta time is this variable here. And the interp speed is up to you. The interp speed is going to be the speed at which we interpolate to the target. So I find that 20 is pretty good. That'll get you a nice quick animation. The higher that you make this value, the quicker it will animate, I believe. So, uh, it should be working right now. We can go ahead and try this out. Yeah, so you can see that part works. We can spin. But there's no animation. Our character doesn't move his gun at all. So we just need to add a little bit of animation logic. This is pretty simple, this stuff here. So go into Anim Starter Pack. Open up the uh, animation blueprint. And we're going to add a new variable. You can click on crouching and hit control W to duplicate. And I'm going to call this one aiming. So if you click on the event graph where we set all our variables, everything after direction, you can just delete it. Just get rid of it. You don't need it. And we're going to take the pawn owner, cast it to our third person character. And remember, we just have that variable is aiming. So all we need to do is check if we are aiming, or get is aiming, and set aiming. And now we have this value aiming, which we can use to update our character's animation. So we'll go back to the animation graph, open up locomotion, open up idle, and we're going to use a blend poses, uh, I think it's called blend poses by bull. So aiming is a boolean value. It's either true or false. So we can blend between two animations depending on whether it's uh, true or false. So if you type blend poses by bool, you need to plug in the value that you want to use for your blend. So that would be aiming. So if I'm not aiming, we want to just use the uh, rifle hip. If I am aiming though, we're going to use this one called Iron Sights. Play Idle Rifle Iron Sights. So let's try it out. I'm going to go ahead and aim, and you can see that my character moves his gun. Check it out, there you have it. So that is how easy it is to get aiming. Oh, one more thing. I didn't implement a crosshair. I'll show you how to get a crosshair working. I don't have a crosshair I can give you, but I'm sure if you go on Google Images, I've just got this one, it's a PMG. So open up your HUD, take an image from the palette, drag it in. I'm going to anchor this to the center. Alignment should be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 
the position X and Y is going to be 0, 0. My size is 25 by 25 because that's the size of my image. And I just took a PNG. I think I just got this. Um, oh, I just made this in Photoshop. So type in cross here. And there you have it. There's a cross here. Uh, I find the cross here a little bit annoying. So if you only want to show the cross here while you're actually aiming and not all the time, here's how you do that as well. So go to visibility and bind to the visibility. You're going to get this new function called get visibility zero. So if you hit F2, you can rename this to get cross here viz. And it's really, really easy. We just take the player. I'm going to go ahead and cast to our third person character. Check if we're aiming. I'm going to use a branch here to check if I'm aiming or not. So if I am aiming, show it. And if I'm not aiming, hide it. It's that simple. So here we go. I'm in the game. As soon as I aim, boom, we get across here. So that's it. Uh, I know it's not a super long complex one, but aiming is something I wanted to get out of the way. Sorry for the lack of posting. I'll post another one real soon. Leave any comments and stuff below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.